So I bought this USB hub on eBay the other day, four quid, brand new, seven port hub with a lead and a power supply. So you wonder, well, if the whole thing's four pounds shipped to the UK, what's the budget for the power supply? Um, here's the power supply, um, UK 13 amp. Um, the label, the only approvals, it just says CE, no other approvals on it. 5 volt DC, 1000 milliamps, and of course made in China. Um, took the screws out, cracked it open. First thing I noticed, the board is just sort of shoved in place with this bit of foam rubber. There are actually two slots either side, but they, they sort of decided they were going to save a fraction of a cent and trim the board a little bit too short to fit the other slot. So look at the self, um, we've got the two wires soldered in, sort of fairly thin flimsy wires as you'd expect. Um, no fuse, looks like they're using this resistor as a fuse. Um, now this part here, it says a Q1, I'm not sure if that's actually a transistor or a chip, but that's pretty much the only active component in the whole thing. Um, dubious creepage distance, about 4mm creepage across that, and it's a paper type uh, PCB as well so slightest hint of carbonisation and that will just arc straight across. Also no feedback, seems to be sort of there's no feedback at all we've got on the secondary side is this, I mean this diode which is supposedly a one amp diode, yeah I'm too convinced about that. There's a resistor which is, where's that resistor go, it's just across the output. Um, Pretty flimsy on for one amp cable, it looks fairly thin, but um, let's fire it up and give it a test, shall we? Right, we've got this rigged up for testing. Um, what we've got is a, this is a very crude dummy load I built many, many years ago. It's just basically a pot and a couple of transistors. Um, it's completely manual, you have to tweak the pot while watching the current um, meter. Um, this is showing the voltage at the end of the cable. This is showing the current, and this is actually showing the current at the, at the beginning of the cable, so we can see how much we're actually losing over these rather flimsy little um, cables. This is plugged into a power meter. Um, this is one of these cheap plug-in jobs. I'm not really that convinced how accurate it's going to be at these sort of low power levels, but uh, let's just see what we get. Right, let's turn it on and see what happens, shall we? Right, no load. 5.65 volts. Bit on the high side, but... Not a major problem. This this power meter is showing zero. Now I suspect it could be the power meter just will show zero below a certain value to avoid giving an inaccurate reading right at the bottom of its range. So um, I don't totally believe that. So let's give it a bit of load. See what happens. Right. Take it up to 100 milliamps. So 100 milliamps. We're now seeing reading 6.99 seven watts on there. So for half a watt out, we're putting seven watts in. So I don't know how accurate that is, but I'm not expecting this thing to be super efficient anyway. Um, output's dropped 5.05 and 5.21 at the start of the cable, so we're losing about 0.15 of a volt over the, uh, over the cable. So let's increase the current, let's go up to 250 milliamps. So 250, output's down to 4.4 volts, 4.8 here, so losing 0.4 across the, um, the cable. 9.3, so we're not drawing that much extra power. Let's keep going, so yeah, 400 milliamps, right, we're now down to 3.7 odd here, which is a bit ridiculous, 4.3, so we're losing 0.6 over the cable, but even the voltage on the output at half its rated load is like 4.2, which is pretty pathetic, and let's see if we can actually get it anywhere near its normal rating, let's try 600 milliamps, we're down to 2.4 volts, which is just a joke, absolutely ridiculous, 3 volts coming out of it. Rubbish, complete and utter rubbish. Can we even get its full rating of one amp out there? I'd be quite surprised. No, it's pretty much down to its short circuit mode now. So 0.2 volts at the end of the cable, 1.2 volts coming out, 720 milliamps. Interesting the current, the power draw, 9.3 watts. Interesting, a lot of that is presumably going to be being dissipated as heat coming off this thing. So. Uh, just probe around it with a, th a thermometer to see if anything's getting particularly hot. So, yeah, we've got that device there is up to 77 degrees. So that's getting pretty warm. Now it's 50. It's quite hard to aim this thermometer on a small target. I go 50, 60, 70. Yeah, 73 degrees, not really acceptable. I don't know how long that would last long term. 
don't propose leaving it on overnight to check thank you very much so basically the nameplate rating is a joke I mean this thing would light the lead on the USB hub it might be okay for like 100 milliamps but you're you know there's no point in using a powered hub before you're going to pull his 100 milliamps out of it I mean it's a total waste of time just for fun I've uh, just taken the output lead off just see how much current we can get out of this thing without all the losses in the output lead So 250 milliamps, 4.7 volts, 500 milliamps, which remember is half its rated rating. We're down to 3.8 volts, and again we just can't get it to its full output at all. It just tops out at 750 milliamps at 0.19 of a volt. I was going to measure the noise on the output, but I just can't be bothered. This thing's such a piece of junk, it just isn't worth it. Just pulled this device out, um, just checking in. It is just an MPN transistor. Um, it's got 13001, which I think is an MJ13001. Um, I suppose you pretty much have to admire the fact that someone can actually make a switch mode power supply that works at all with just one transistor, but it really is such a piece of junk, it's, it's barely worth it. Well, I'm just going to pull this transformer apart, have a look at what the insulation's like. Looks like a fairly book standard transformer, but you can't really tell from the outside. Alright, just very carefully remove this ferrite core. Let's undo the sticky tape. Mm, some of the red gunk from the sticky tape stuck to the windings. Can't say I can see a great line. This is the output side here, and this is the mains input side. Um, I can't say there's a huge amount of obvious separation between the two and this is one of the windings connected to the mains here and I don't think there's more than maybe one layer of that tape separating the two. Let's pull that wire off. It's one of the prime there's two primary windings. So I'm guessing it's probably something like a blocking oscillator, which is about the simplest sort of L inductive oscillator you can do so that's the first winding so here we've got so then that winding was wound over here and you can see we've got this second layer of tape which is separated looks like the other primary windings on the inside unless the yeah it looks like the, the secondary is on is the next layer down Right, and the tape for the inner primary looks fairly intact, but I mean, I can't say I'm super impressed by the separation in this. Can't find it in, so let's make one. Yeah, and that pretty much looks like it's just one single layer of, you know, something that's pretty much like sellotape separating the mains from your USB devices. Not very impressive. <laughs>